The community as a whole don't want uh, extinction to occur of our native species. Landholders who um, rely on these areas then feel very strongly uh, and attached to these riparian areas and streams, don't want um, the loss of native fish and obviously recreational fishes which are a large group that come and visit these rivers. They don't want to be just catching redfin and carp. We know that up to 80% of sites, cultural sites, are within 300 metres of a stream and they contain a lot of features and spiritual places for our Indigenous community. Well, growing up on a family property at Ardlethan, we had creeks around where we lived and uh, they were always an important aspect of my growing up. We had uh, extensive erosion on our property and we got the Soil Conservation Service in. I decided that right there and then that's what I wanted to do later in life. I'm Finn Martin, I work with the Lachlan Catchment Management Authority and I specialise in river and wetland restoration. I'm particularly interested in river and wetland ecosystems because I see them as the, the lifeblood of the catchment. They're the arteries of the catchment. I first became involved with the redfin pest issue through the Macquarie Perch Recovery Project, which is situated in the Abercrombie River and Lachlan River catchments. These catchments flow into Wyangla Dam and Wyangla Dam is located just upstream from the township of Cowra. Redfin is a, th a threat to the Macquarie perch and the Macquarie perch is an iconic but endangered native fish species. It's become threatened not specifically because of the redfin but through loss of habitat, issues with soil erosion and water quality and also barriers that we've put into streams with, which impact migration of that fish species. So that's why we're experiencing quite a few of our native fish becoming either vulnerable or threatened, endangered. Now, with the introduction of the redfin pest species, we've got an added threat, an immediate threat, that could actually wipe out the Macquarie perch. So we've partnered with Fisheries New South Wales to address some of the issues associated with recovering the Macquarie perch. The Lachlan CMA is dealing with the habitat restoration aspect of the project and I've been dealing with Luke Pearce from Fisheries New South Wales to deal with the threat posed by the redfin. Hi, I'm Luke Pearce. I'm a conservation manager with Fisheries New South Wales and have been for seven years. Um, I have a very broad role, including uh, habitat and threatened species management. We still have some really strong populations of Macquarie perch in the Abercrombie and Upper Lachlan, probably the, the most viable and largest populations within New South Wales. And one of the reasons that those populations had been persisting so well in those catchments was because uh, redfin had never been uh, introduced into those catchments before. And we're really concerned back in 2006 when we first found redfin in those catchments and the potential impacts that they could have to Macquarie perch. So how redfin impact on Macquarie perch, there's two main ways. They spawn in late winter, whereas most of our native fish spawn in, in spring or summer. So, you know, they breed up in really, really big numbers and, and form these big schools of um, really voracious little uh, hungry fish that are swimming around. And by the time all our native fish breed and their eggs hatch, it's all these tiny little uh, juvenile native fish swimming around. And these redfin are about, you know, uh, five times as big as them, chasing them around looking for something to eat. So they really heavily predate on, on small juvenile native fish when they're in those sort of numbers. Redfin carry a virus called EHN virus, which has proved to be uh, lethal to Macquarie perch and a number of other native species. When they are introduced to an area, could potentially wipe native fish out from certain sections of the river where that they haven't been exposed to that virus before. So the decision was made, we wouldn't be able to eradicate redfin from those systems. Um, there wasn't much else we could do within the systems to try and control the spread of the fish within them. So we decided to actually take some of the Macquarie perch out of the system to our hatchery at Narandra and try and maintain a refuge population there. And hopefully while we had them there, do some experimental work and try and get them to breed in captivity. So this approach we've used with the artificial stream is, is a world first. We've, it's never actually been uh, attempted before. And so far we've had two uh, successful spawnings from fish that have come out of this system so there looks to be uh, some early indications that, that, that the system is actually working and some of the techniques that the guys at the hatchery at Naranda are using are actually uh, yeah, starting to show some success. 
So unfortunately, once an introduced fish such as redfin gets into a system, it's pretty much impossible to eradicate them. It was all about trying to find areas where we could try and establish populations of Macquarie perch where the redfin won't be able to get. So we found one in the Retreat River. There's a, there's a really steep sort of waterfall section there that redfin won't be able to get upstream of. So we're trying to establish a population of Macquarie perch above that barrier where they'll be safe from the impacts of the redfin. So Fisheries New South Wales works really closely with landholders in terms of monitoring what the fish populations are up to. And that's really important in, in providing information back to the CMA so they can drive some of the restoration projects and the habitat rehabilitation projects that they're doing with landholders like Vince Heffernan, whose property we're on here today. My name's Vince Heffernan. My wife Janet and I are landholders here at Moorlands. Uh, Moorlands is on the Lachlan River. Our family's had moorlands since the 30s, the 1830s, so I'm sixth generation on this, on this farm. The Lachlan itself, as has more generally the landscape, has been degrading slowly, and it is a slow process, but over decades you can see uh, a diminution in the, in the quality of the, the ecosystem here, and unfortunately that, that has some quite uh, serious ramifications and and, and it's quite sad. And we, we, we really want to try and turn that around. We feel that we can turn it around and with the help of the, the likes of the Catchment Management Authority, we believe that this, that's possible. So as part of the Macquarie Perch Recovery Project, we needed to work out what habitat was required for the Macquarie Perch. We've got the expertise of Fisheries New South Wales to come in and actually map the whole of the Upper Lachlan River and also the Abercrombie Rivers to determine where the populations were of Macquarie perch and also um, to overlay what sort of habitat that they liked. Areas where there wasn't a great deal of erosion, there were large complex snags similar to the, the trees behind me. We had cobble substrate so the bed of the river was cobble and not sand and there was good quality water there. If we can improve and enhance the biodiversity and the habitat along the river, we help solve a lot of problems. One of the first things we had to do was to fence off the river and the riparian zones on this farm. There's another 11 kilometres of stream that flows directly into the river on the farm. And once we fenced those areas off, we could then start to reintroduce some of the species that had gone missing, so the trees, the shrubs, the understory along those uh, riparian river and creek zones. And uh, by excluding the stock we were able to do that. Once you've taken the river away from the stock you had to then find other ways to, to supply water to the, to the sheep. So we, we've had to install a, a, an alternate watering system. And uh, we then just had to more more generally look at issues to do with erosion because one of the big uh, problems for the habitat, particularly with fish, is combating the, the slug of, of sand and silt that come down the river due to erosion. And that's been handled in two ways. Firstly, taking on active gully erosion, uh, fencing that gully erosion off, planting it, allowing it to grass up and attempting to recover those areas so that they don't remain active. And secondly, just changing our grazing management to a, a rotational grazing system whereby we can keep 100% of the ground cover no matter the season. And through that ground cover we stop that sheet erosion that, uh, that really does create problems for the river. I suppose the message that we give to landholders and community members is that these riparian areas or stream areas um, are really important throughout the landscape and that they really need protecting and enhancing. Whatever you do around these areas have a, has a major impact. So we would like to work with landholders and also the community to make sure that, that message is getting through and that some of the best practices that we currently know of are implemented and that includes things like off-stream watering, revegetation, erosion and sediment control. We've been at this for uh, almost a decade and the results are, are, are really marked. The general condition of the pasture and the grasslands that our, that our farm is on, 
We've seen species come back into the system that weren't there before. Uh, and we've certainly seen uh, the beautification of the country uh, as an aesthetic of having these shrubs and these trees that, that wasn't there before as well. And certainly the river itself looks much healthier. This is going to be a long-term project. It's taken many generations to get it this bad and I think it'll probably take many generations to, to fix it up as well. But we've made a start and in, in 10 short years I think we've seen dramatic changes for the better. We realise that we can't be an oasis in the sense that we can't be doing this all on our own, that really this requires uh, all landholders, uh, farmers and others to, to be involved. We need landholders to have better ecological knowledge. If they have an understanding of how the ecosystem works and they understand that looking after an individual species has flow-on benefits to other parts of the ecosystem, and also the services that that ecosystem provides by way of clean air, good water, good soil, then they're more willing to invest in trying to look after that. Particularly if they understand that that doesn't cost them money, it doesn't mean that they become less profitable because of that. I think that there are people who see that, uh, that good ecological management and good agriculture are, are diametrically opposed and that's not the case. I think that we've found that we can uh, do both. So the impacts of a do nothing scenario is essentially things will just continue to get worse. We might have extinction of certain native fish species, maybe a generation or two, especially considering some of the threats that, are, that have um, developed in terms of the red fin pest and also climate change. 